You're listening to Journaling with PT. I am your host, artist PT Russell. This is a podcast that highlights creative voices and emerging artists from all over the world. In today's podcast, I have the children's book author, Stephanie Parks, and her wonderful fantasy novel, The Butterflies of Meadow Hill Manor. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Today, we're going to take a little trip to Derbyshire in England to the Butterflies of Meadow Manor. And today, I have my very first author, and her name is Miss Stephanie Parks. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, PT. How are you, my dear? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. That's wonderful. And how is, I'm curious about the weather all the Uh, way down there. Well, I'm recording this from New Zealand, so it's our summer at the moment. Um, It's 30 degrees today. It's boiling hot. Oh, wow. 30 degrees Celsius. So that's, yeah, that's somewhere about 80 something. Yeah, Fahrenheit, yeah. Fahrenheit for the for the Westerners. So that's oh wow, that is pretty warm. And uh, typically, what's in season uh, there in New New Zealand this time of year? Um, oh, it does get pretty hot this time of mm-hmm. year. So yeah, we would we'd normally be high twenties around now. It's pretty typical. Okay, and w- what about in, in terms of fruits? Or, or I'm just curious about the fruits, vegetables, anything like that in particular that's in season right now there. That's uh, maybe oh, something God. different. Yeah, that we would yeah, have. My knowledge now. I know that um, we have a really cool berry here called a boysenberry, um, mm. but I don't actually know when it comes into season, which is terrible of me. But um, no, no, no. that's very popular here. Oh, and the golden kiwi fruit, of course. Oh wow, that's that's great. That is great. So what? Uh, Was there a significant adjustment period for you and the adaptation between there and England or? Yeah, um, probably the biggest change is the seasons because they're all Mm -hmm. back to front. I'm used to it being very cold right now in the UK um, with it being January. And I find having a really hot Christmas day very strange. It's still I've been here a few years now, but it's it's still very strange to me that it's hot on Christmas Day. (laughs) not warm hot hot yes yeah. Yeah, yeah sometimes warm but um well the kiwis will often say oh it's a bit cool today but it'll be kind of high teens like 20 yeah so to me it's really hot <laughs> oh wow yeah it definitely definitely is warm and here in canada we have well the weather is different it's cooler but it's uh warmer than usual so something's going on who knows yeah Maybe some of the butterflies uh, got into the <laughs> the polar <laughs> systems, and uh, <laughs> who knows? Uh, so, just um, as an introduction, please share a little more about yourself for our listeners who are not familiar with Miss Stephen Parks. Ah, sure. Um, so, as you said, my name is Stephanie. Um, And by trade, I'm actually a teacher. I was a primary school teacher um, specializing um, in working with children with special needs. So children with autism or ADHD or some sort of intellectual disability. Um, Outside of that, though, I love to write. I love to read and write fantasy books. Um, And I particularly enjoy reading middle grade, um, sorry, writing middle grade and young adult fantasy um so my most recent book uh, my first book actually that um has just been published is the butterflies of meadow hill manor um and that's aimed at eight to 12 year olds that's a fantasy book um it's a sort of magical discovery book um with sort of themes of um friendship and healing i'd say yes definitely now you have me in a loop because i didn't know this about you about you teaching 
special needs children. Uh, my son is on the spectrum, so I'm an advocate for autism. And sure. uh, yeah, and that's a special place in my heart. So I just took pause just now to uh, for all those wonderful little children and grown ups with who are experiencing challenges with a diagnosis. Mm. So, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. So, um, uh, kudos to you and teachers like yourself who are involved with special education because it's definitely something that takes special people. Oh, and I say special people with, you know, with three or four asterisks in front and behind because yeah. it is, uh, it is uh, it's a, a labor of love and it takes a lot more patience and you just have to be a special person to, to, uh, to, to just to, to venture into that. Anyways, just had to say that stop. And, and so I, lots of admiration from me to you. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> Okay, that is that is that's great. It's a great piece of information. Thank you for sharing that. Um, when did your love for writing begin? Oh, um, for writing, probably when I was about six years old. Um, I would say it happened right alongside my real love for reading being discovered. Um, I got handed um, an old sort of bound green book and I think my grandmother gave it me um, it appeared from somewhere and it had no picture on the front and no pictures inside and I remember being quite kind of intrigued um, thought it was maybe an adult's book and I started reading it and it was actually an Enid Blyton book um, and it was the oh. children of the faraway tree which is about three children who moved to the country and discover this magical forest filled with elves and fairies and all sorts and I was just hooked um, I was hooked on reading fantasy and I started writing probably the same week started writing my own little stories um, and forcing my poor mum to read them all <laughs> <laughs> so at six you were writing already uh yes yeah probably wow. very poorly and probably with crayons but yes I was <laughs> oh that is that's great I know a lot of six-year-olds just learning to read and you're writing and stories already. And it was, you said you enjoyed the books about fairies and fantasy from just very young. Yeah. Yeah. From a very young age. I know. Um, yeah. I lived um, with my mum in a caravan for a long time and she, she worked really hard to make sure that I could read um, before I went to school. Um, so when I started school, I kind of already, had quite a bit of um reading knowledge under my belt and sort of yeah it was uh it was, it's all down to my mum really she yeah she worked really hard to to make sure I was yeah reading widely and 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 therefore able to write I guess thank you so much mum for your contribution to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to the literary world absolutely <laughs> and without divulging too much what inspired the, this narrative around the butterflies of Meadow Manor? Um, well, I use so it's set in Derbyshire, um, and it's set in a, a market town. Oh, oh um, sorry, I, I didn't pronounce it correctly. I said, what did I say, Derbyshire? <laughs> How do you say Derbyshire, it again? Derbyshire, yeah. <laughs> so it's D Derbyshire. If you come from Derbyshire, Derbyshire. D oh, oh, I'm not from there, so I'm okay? Yeah, you're okay. You're oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to say it like uh, the guys from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was close it was close so, how yeah, do you say it again how do you derbyshire derbyshire is that better yeah. derbyshire yeah okay there, you, there we go continue sorry ma'am that's no, okay so i grew up in derbyshire um and i lived in the little market town of belper and it's a it's a beautiful little town um there's quite a lot of history there there's a big old mill there um and I think it's like a textile mill. Um, so there's a big river there that used to power the mill. Um, and I lived there for a little while. And I lived near a nature reserve where I used to walk my dog. Um, and there were always butterflies as I'd, I'd walk through the nature reserve and I'd see the butterflies. And I guess it just started with an idea, a kind of a what if. What if, what if these were magical? What, what kind of story would that be? Um, and I thought about it over the years and it eventually developed into the story that it is today. Wow. Yeah, that is, I read the book. Okay. Thank you for letting okay. me have a sneak peek. Okay. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. 
I read it to my son, as I mentioned, he is on the spectrum. He enjoyed it. And of course, I'm very animated. And so he's listening and he's like, oh, the butterflies. And he's just looking. So he was very captivated by uh, the the butterflies. And oh. yes, so I, I do, I'm not going to give anything away, but I'll let you know that it was quite an enjoyable read. And would you mind giving us a little teaser preview, please, Stephanie? Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I've got a little paragraph that's from sort of near the start, not right at the start, but this is at the start of the story, okay? Okay. I dreamt of butterflies again. They were tapping against the window panes and trying to wake me. They wanted to tell me something, something important. A sudden crashing sound like the breaking of a vase woke me from the dream. With a start, I instinctively sat up and reached out to her bed. Had she woken too? My hand fell through empty space and tears threatened the corners of my eyes as my brain caught up and remembered she wasn't there. She would never be there. Just breathe, I told myself, in and out. Wow. And there you have it. Wow. <laughs> and your, your reading <laughs> voice is, yes, is, is pulling me in. Very immersive. Uh, that's my that, teacher voice <laughs> the, the teacher voice there that that's what did it that is uh yeah this uh such a visceral world of how do i describe it unparalleled whimsy <laughs> i guess yeah you you wrote it and such a curative manner because it's like there's something about this story and this is for those listening who would want to find the butterflies of meadow manor and have a read for themselves there's a very therapeutic quality to this story. It's very layered. Uh, yes, it's for a certain demographic in terms of age, but I believe it's for ev everyone. Anyone can read this uh, story and enjoy it, not just children. I didn't think of it as a, a children or a, you know, a young adult reading. I, I enjoyed it because of the layers i think it's um at least for me was that your intention when you when you wrote the story for it to appeal to uh, uh, more of an audience or is it just targeted toward this group i think if i'm honest when i when i wrote it i wrote it with children in mind but i guess there's okay. that there's that knowledge that mm -hmm. children at eight nine ten years old are often still being read too so you want the parents or the carers to be enjoying the story along with the children. And I think parents will understand, you know, you've talked about those layers and, and there is um, kind of an element of healing and, and yeah, I guess a therapeutic mm. layer to the story too. And I think the parents will understand and access that in a, in a different way to children. Um, and yeah, I mean, thank you for your feedback. I've had lots of comments from adults who have, who have said something mm. similar that actually, oh, I really enjoyed it. I, didn't feel that it was just for children so that's I mean that's lovely to hear yes it is true it is and also for me uh, just a few things stood out especially with the the main character Amy and mm. I, you're you're wanting to know how her journey is going to end and and you you start it, it starts a certain way uh, with her and you're like okay well this is I don't know this is going to happen I'm glad we didn't linger there too long we went on but uh yeah it was that was it was interesting her journey and mm. watching somewhat of a hero's journey unfold because of what she experienced and so that another like like I said another element to the narrative and it, it's just great and this just these melodic riddles interspersed throughout the story was my favorite part and I think my son also enjoyed that as well because I would always change and lilt a lot <laughs> use the lilt or, or my uh, in, in interpretation of a lilt and and uh, the British <laughs> I won't try it here <laughs> but I would read the riddles <laughs> you know just to give him more of a uh, I guess that immersive experience he found it funny anyway and I truly enjoyed that part of the story uh and is amy uh influenced by anyone in particular or is it just a character you created um no she she is just a character i created for the story so there are other characters that are heavily influenced by 
people I have known. Mm -hmm. Um, But she is heavily, um, not heavily, um, she is, yeah, she was created with a story. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I found, yeah, because she's, there's a, well, because of her backstory, uh, there is a lot going on with her, but she seemed very multidimensional. And uh, like, like there's more uh, that perhaps a series, I don't know, <laughs> could be in the making. You you understand where I'm going with this? But uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that a possibility? Yeah, yeah. It is. So I've, I'm just mm-hmm. editing the second Butterfly book now. And Amy is still the main character within that story. So, yeah. Oh, that's good to know. I, that's the plan. That is excellent. And did anything particular influence your writing style? Because I noticed there's a certain t- cadence to the way everything's worded. and Or is it, how, how did that unfold for you? Um, what, uh, I'm not sure what you mean. The writing, the, the style of like, uh, at least I, maybe it's just my perception. But I've, uh, in reading the story, it is written a very particular way, uh, very poetic in its descriptions. And I don't know if that was intentional or that if that's just your writing style in general. Oh, okay. No, okay. I'm with you. I um, guess, um, yeah, without wanting to give too much away, sure, um, sure. there yeah, there are some magical elements within the book that definitely have um, sort of rhyming poetry within them. So she mm-hmm. finds magical items along the way, and one of those helps her with those um, rhymes and sort of riddly kind of puzzles. Mm-hmm. So I think that's influenced part of the writing style. Um, it's also written in the first person, um, which I think can be a little less common nowadays um but i really wanted it to be focused on amy's perspective so you get a real insight into that that journey that she's on um because we follow her from a a starting place um which isn't the easiest starting place to read about this is not a happy main character when we first meet her and she kind of goes on this journey um so yeah hopefully the writing style mirrors and matches her journey through the book it does it does it's uh, it's beautifully written and yeah so i enjoyed that part of it as well and were there any challenges for you writing for a younger audience but because you're a teacher i think <laughs> maybe that helps it does that help with you yeah I, th- I, think it does help. So I, I mean um i'm no longer in the classroom but when I was in the classroom, you know, story time is a huge, a huge part of every day, um, something that children always looked forward to. So I read to the children a lot. Um, we got through lots of books over the years. Um, and I think you, you get a good feeling for the books that the children really enjoy um, and the other books where children are kind of having to ask a lot of questions and you're having to explain a lot as the teacher. And they don't really like that. They like to be able to access the story for themselves um but I also think they can really manage um deep um emotions and deep complexity of character much better than we give them credit for um so I think that's why I went the way I went with this book um it doesn't really shy away um from some big big themes Hmm. okay and so would you say that it's so it's no challenge at all just writing for a younger audience versus writing for an adult audience? Um, I haven't written for an adult okay. audience. So I yeah, I don't know that I could answer that. Okay. So honestly, uh, so you I've have a, written- yeah, I, I mean like uh, if you would have written perhaps an essay, you've written essays and and oh, it's not necessarily okay. a novel but you're yeah. reading, but I guess that's more ed, an edu- an academic type of approach to your writing yeah. style as opposed as opposed to something that's for entertainment and yeah. Not, not I mean, just... I guess as I was writing, I was I I sort of held true to writing the kind of thing that I knew I would have loved as a child, um, and that the children in my classes would have loved. I guess one of the challenges is you're sort of reading it with an adult eye but you're sort of 
monitoring yourself and checking oh, is this too dark in places is this so you're kind of checking for that um, I mean I have some children that do sort of test reading for me and that's really helpful that they're, they're brutally honest um, <laughs> so that's that's really handy yeah okay but I, I'm understanding what you're saying now about that I, you have to excuse me this is the first time an author has been on so I'm just curious about the you know the differences in in uh, uh, writing for a younger audience versus uh, an adult I'm sure there's so, but you haven't done that yet so perhaps maybe in the future you will who knows yeah. <laughs> it, may, it may be but uh, it is just um, it's just a wonderful a story that uh, I am so happy that you have written and was this a long process for you in terms of drafting and that kind of thing um yeah yeah it was a long um a long process I think I first had the idea and started mulling it over probably 20 years ago um and then I faffed around a lot in between that time <laughs> mm-hmm. you know work life got busy um and yeah it was only since I moved to New Zealand um and I guess I feel like I got a really a really good a really healthy work-life balance and just had more time to do the things that I loved um and then I thought hey I'm, I'm gonna give this a shot I'll, I'll start approaching publishers and see where this goes um so it was a really long process um longer than it needed to be I mean the editing and the drafting are probably spent about eight months um not full time I I work as well um but yeah it took a lot of reads um and it's hard I think to be honest I could have become stuck in that editing phase for the rest of my life you know every time you look at it you're like oh I can just tweak this and this and this so Mm. at some point you have to say right what's what's good enough like when do you send it to the publisher because I think you can get stuck there just continually editing and and trying to improve and how did you determine that? Did you just, it was time or it was just something in particular? They said, okay, this is, I've had enough of this, it's time for, to go. When did that time I, come for you? I think I got to the stage where I was editing, but I wasn't doing any big plot changes uh, or scene changes anymore. I was kind of tinkering around the edges, maybe changing a word or some phrases here and there, but I wasn't really changing the story anymore and I kind of thought you know what this is it you're not you're happy with the story you're just tweaking and changing words or phrases here and there so it's probably time like it's time to send it off um so that that was the signal for me oh well that's good I'm glad you sent it off and and you have it done and where can uh listeners find uh, the butterflies of meadow manor um so it's the, probably the easiest place to get it is on Amazon. Okay. Well, there. Yes, head to Amazon. Well, that's pretty easy. And I'll have links definitely in the show notes so that awesome. they can have, they can find. So you can, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that later. But that is, uh, I'm telling you, this is, uh, this has to be a series. I don't know. <laughs> I'm <laughs> glad you're working on the next thing. I you am. Can't... <laughs> <laughs> but plenty more butterfly magic to come. <laughs> Oh, yes, uh, most definitely. And uh, there is, it's so hard when you have something and you, (laughs) you have to keep it under wraps, right? But Uh, yes, yes, I I just love the dynamic with the, the characters, you know, together with themselves, uh, the the relationships. And uh, it's just so many things uh, going on and um, all at once. And yeah, so it's uh, you can get lost in this world. I it's definitely a little trip, as I've mentioned. So you definitely yeah. want to do that, and so that is great. And uh, yeah, so where can folks find you, uh, Stephanie? Oh, yeah. If they were interested um, so, in getting in contact with you. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. So um, I have a website which is sparkswriting or sparkswriting.com. Mm -hmm. um and i'm also kind of on the social media as sparks writing so s parks all one word sparks writing that's great and we will have that again in the show notes so i have a quick question before we close and that is i have three names okay and i want you to choose one of them uh and then i want you to tell me why 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just three names. And, okay. Okay. The first name is Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. Edgar Allan. Mm-hmm. Or Charles Dickens. Oh, easy. Charles Dickens. And why? Um... Charles Dickens um, wrote one of my favorite books, actually, which was Great Expectations. That was a really easy pick for me. I did study um, Shakespeare and Edgar Allan at school, but that felt more laborious for me. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Beautiful, beautiful um, language. Obviously, um, yeah, really enjoyed it. But Charles Dickens, I loved Oliver Twist um, and I loved Great Expectations. Um, Yeah, just just loved Oh, the whole Dickensian um, story vibe is, yeah, is my happy place. So. Yes, Charles Dickens for me as well. I could remember having my first uh, unabridged version of Oliver Twist. And oh. my mother got that for me for my 12th birthday. And I that was, uh, you know, well loved. I'll put it that way. Yeah, uh, yeah. The language is beautiful. Absolutely oh, beautiful. Definitely. And because I'd read other versions and they didn't compare at all to the unabridged version. So I'm happy that you two chose yeah. <laughs> Charles Dickens. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah, so this has been absolutely wonderful and I, I can't wait to hear more about the series and learn more about Amy's adventures and have you back on to perhaps speak about that. That'd be great. Yeah, it'd be lovely. Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to, uh, maybe a, a greeting you want to send to into England or perhaps? Say that again, sorry. Is there a greeting that you'd like to send to anyone in England or? Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. So mm-hmm. definitely have to say, um, a, send a greeting to my mum and to my family in England that have been hugely supportive. Thank you, guys. And then another special um, hello would go to my best friend, Jill, who lives in the Netherlands. And there is a character in the book that is um, based on her. Yes, I remember that name. I yeah. was just about to say something, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tempting and I won't. A pleasure, Stephanie. All the very best in all that you do. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. It's been lovely to chat to you. All right. You are listening to Journaling with PT and a conversation with children's book author Stephanie Parks. It was wonderful learning more about her fantasy book, The Butterflies of Meadow Hill Manor. Follow Stephanie. Read the book. You can find it on Amazon. The information will be in the show notes. Follow the podcast. Thanks for listening. And stay tuned.